Welcome to game number one of Alex versus Pat Shaw quarterfinal. We actually had uh, William from the Table Pit and Greg, aka Darth Prentice, recorded uh, this game, uh, recorded commentary, uh, and I had absolutely butchered uh, the video that they had recorded against. So I am now stepping in to record it so that it makes sense. Um, so I appreciate them. They will see them for the other two games. I appreciate them coming in and recording these. And I felt quite terrible about the fact that uh, they watched a not an incomplete game is, is what ended up happening. Um, we we have uh, Alex going first in here, coming in with a sweeping blow, generating an ash, doing everything that doing everything that Dromai wants to do. All right, and then we're also going to be pitching a red in there to create another ash for our glory seeker uh, which draws a card now this was a crazy cool addition that alex brought in because of, of heavy hitters he's kind of our drill my specialist in the clash format and i absolutely love this addition to draw my i had to go out and immediately buy one um, as soon as i saw that that was a fantastic addition in there you know you could pitch three reds in this case he just did one red but because he had a couple floating in there a fantastic way of creating ash and getting it in there we do have yenderai uh invoking yenderai not attacking with it right this is a tricky matchup for for Dromai, obviously because we have the age-old poppers of guardian and every turn patshaw is going to have the age-old question of do I pop this or not, right? When, we, when, when Guardian lets go of poppers, that means that their turn will be that much less powerful. Uh, but they, a lot of times you could just, you know, that's how you keep the dragons at bay. Coming in with a choke slam, which this is great. Most of these abilities, some of these abilities will have effects. A lot of them aren't going to really affect on, on the kind of the crush level. Um, but, you know, I think you still want to... The 6 damage is still 6 damage against a 20 health hero. That's still quite a bit of damage coming in. So you want to probably block some of this. I do know Alex is running a couple different D-Reacts. Um, so, you know, we'll keep our eye out for those throughout this game to see if those come in clutch or not. There it is. Two blocking. That's a great, great block in there. Going in there. Now, this is a really, Victor, Victor's a really in an interesting spot. Um, on, on this level right now in, in heavy hitters, Victor is in kind of an interesting spot because there's not a ton of gold cards. There are some, but there's, there's a lot less of gold cards and um, token creation cards, and so, oh, coming in with a Yender Eye. Are we gonna pop it? This will be three damage coming out of. Patshaw definitely having a good think on this. We just pop it and move on, and we do. We are just gonna pop it, move on. Um, that will kind of, you know, make the turn a little bit weaker. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Victor's just looking to... Uh, <laughs> Victor's just looking to really just... You know, swing hammer, right? If Victor can just swing hammer... Oh, there we go. We got a buckling blow, a blue buckling blow. It is, but it is a six, nonetheless, um, coming in. Now, Victor does, right? Like, overall, Victor wants to clash. So, a lot of his blues he's going to bring in are going to be sixes. There's there's going to be a good amount of, of cards out there that you will that will cost four, five, and even six and seven, right? Uh, resources in order to play them. Because at the end of the day, just pitching and swinging hammer is great. But when you can, you know, come in and swing six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like, well, you're very happy, right? Sink below coming up, taking two.
All right, that is one card down though. So that means Alex is a three card hand, which which Romai is always really good. And there is the Chromai. Obviously very, very good. Um when it comes in, you're gonna get an action point and immediately attacking with invoke Chromai. Which is phenomenal. Oh, excuse me, sorry. When he attacks or leaves, or leaves the arena, not when he, not when he's brought in. So coming in, getting that extra point. So you wonder. Um, uh, I think with Chromai, you do try to pop Chromai pretty much immediately, right? Like you don't want to have to deal with that. So there's the popper, popping Chromai. What is he going to follow up with this though? Um, you think that okay, Blaze Headlong. Okay, following up with a Blaze Headlong does have go again because a red was played this turn. So that's a four. Obviously, no popper at all. I know Alex's list runs a decent blend of dragons with attack actions. So there's actually a really good blend between the two, which in a matchup like this is exactly what you want. Um, so Blaze Headlong coming in four break point. Looks like he's just taking it. Yeah, just taking that four. Um, which right now may not be a big deal, but it could be. And then coming in with the render eye, the the yender eye, excuse me, the render eye, right? The yender eye coming in four three. Does Pat want to blow that one up as well? Definitely having anything. There it is, and there it is. Gonna gonna pop it as well. I do think you have to, right? So. This puts Jeremiah in an interesting spot. Jeremiah has no ash at this point. And so you're going to have to generate the ash. So you're going to have to pay resources. So that's at least a couple cards plus um, extra in there. So we'll see what, what he's going to do in order to do that. Breaking the bigger girth. Interesting. So deciding to go for the... Go for the vigor instead of the block, right? Like you, you run the vigor girth so that you can get either one, right? That is a really good piece in there because you can run a block with it, or you can get it set up to get a resource. So an Othos for four coming in, um, but I'm I'm actually curious why I'm actually really interested as to uh, maybe what his next hand is, right? Like maybe in his arsenal he's got a Pat has a something that costs four, so then you just have to hang on to a blue. And you got the vigor set up for that. Uh, this is really, really smart on Alex's part. Remember we just talked about how you're going to need a couple cards in order to build the Ash, right? You're going to need to play the card and that. So now he's just going to block two. He's going to pitch his red in order to get that Ash. So now he's got Ash generated because he pitched a red. So he, do he could just go in with a big dragon now. And there is the Asvali. Asvali is the one way that Jeremiah can get arcane damage in this format, right? There is no burn them all. Oh my gosh, starting off with the blaze headlong. So you got the blaze headlong, you get the Asvali out, you get the blaze headlong, then you can come in with Asvali if you want to. Who knows what else you have in there? But this is so good. But all of Alex, if you look at it, all of Alex's equipment is really made to pitch to. You're going to pitch red to it in order to build Ash. Even his chest plate, right? Like, you would think maybe something that gives you, uh, that gives you, you know, like maybe the the sash, right? You get the Sandakai, the sash of Sandakai that gives you one if you played a red resource. You got stuff like that, but no, he's opting to gain to get the Ironhide chest play in there in order to gain the Ash. So literally, most of his pieces, almost all of his pieces, are expecting, hey, I'm gonna pitch this in order to gain Ash. Um, we do have that, so we blocked with the Civic Steps. He gets a Quicken token. He's just putting down a Upside Down Flesh and Blood a token to represent that Quicken token. Obviously, we're playing over webcam, so not everybody has their tokens on them that they need. And then, oh my gosh, Dust Up. One of the downsides of Dust Up is the fact that you... It, do, it, it completely stops. It doesn't have to go again. He's able to give it go again. Now, granted... He had no Ash, so he couldn't transfer one of them into an Aether Ashwing, right? So there is that downside, but he's just making use of the fact that, hey, this is a two coming in here. 
Um, and it gets Goa again, and utilizing that Quicken token is so key in this matchup. We, you know, we definitely saw Pat was definitely thinking, hey, he's going to swing a dragon. It's going to use it up anyways. But utilizing that dust stuff, then coming in with the blocker with a civic guide to create a might token. So now he's got another attack. Maybe he's got a zero cost in there. No, he's just ending. He's just ending right there. He's hanging on to the Asmolai, probably waiting for a good moment. I would say overall. So, so really, in that right there, the Quicken token didn't do anything for him, right? Like he still stopped at the dust up. So it didn't, it didn't do anything in, in that instance. Um, although, did he fully pass? Oh, yep, he did. Okay, so there's the Nothos coming in. For six. Nice. Getting that set up. You know, one of the downsides um, of, of Victor, you know, with when you have Bravo, like, you can pitch for his ability and then attack with and then attack with an Othos, and that way you can always get six attack. Um, but in this case, right, he wants to have a lot more reds. He's trying to win those clashes. He's trying to get those big bumps up in, in the reds and even the blues. And so a lot of his cards just cost three and above. So on hands like this, this is a perfect. Put down a blue and a red. Uh, swing for six. Like you're doing what you want to do. You, you're just, you're, Victor's building his deck. Very similar to as all gardens do, but in a very particular way that could kind of take care of that Anothos in there. Alex really thinking the sir. Oh, and the pummel comes in now. It is on Anothos, so it isn't going to make him discard. Oh my goodness! So he had Alex hanging on, really holding on to the fate for scene, and showing real discipline in that, really forcing him to do that. So he takes six, which is still quite a lot, right? If it was me, I would have immediately just dropped the fate for scene, and then he might have just been like, "All right, well, I'm not gonna, you know, do the pummel on there." Now, pummel does not make you discard when it is on a hammer. So he wouldn't, it's just pure damage on there at that point. But he's really, you know, he's like, Pat's coming out and be like, hey, I'm about to absolutely wreck you. And he's like, no, 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 I'll take six, which isn't going to wreck me. It's not great, but, you know, it's not going to wreck me. Here's Billowing Mirage. You do have to pitch one here, so this is exactly what you want to do. And he pitches away probably our best card there. I don't think you're going to see that, Alex, at the end of the game. Who knows? Uh, Pat wa does want to make the game to go long, absolutely go long. All right, so building a mirage for four because of that mic token, and he's going to block it with test of strength. All right, obviously loses. Oh, hoo, hoo. look at that. That was a macho, red macho grande. Um, so he wins the gold, you know, with the gold, he gets to draw it. So he replaces that card. That's exactly what you, what you want to see when you play a test of strength. And, and against a Droma, you're probably going to get that. All right, and then we got an Ember Moss and a Pie. Now, this, you can absolutely blow it up. If you do blow it up, though, he gets an Ash. But right now, right now, there is no Ash. So this is this is coming in for six, I believe. Yeah, that's six. Um, that's, not, that's not small, right? Like, that'll bring him to parity. But he can blow it up, and that will give you Ash. And uh, honestly, if I'm Dromai, I think either one is a win. Yep, and he uses that. He uses that Macho Grande that he just drew to blow it up. Alex gets an Ash. And now he's going to pass the turn, and it's going to go right back to Pat. Oh, what is Pat's going to... Got a, he's got a, it's a... Oh, my goodness. What? All right. <laughs> so he's pitching away the Golden Sun. Um. Can't use it, really, so he's going to do that so he can come in for six. Um, like I said, Pat is really looking to kind of elongate this game, right? Like, he can blow stuff up, but he doesn't care. He's okay with he's okay with playing the long game. So while he's putting the Golden Sun at the bottom of this, like, this game could very much just stay right here for a while. Oh, a sick below, fully blocking him. 
No damage going back and forth. Like I said, we've been at 10 and 16 for a while now, for a few turns. Like, both of these decks really don't mind just kind of stalling out and, and going, right? Like, Pat Shaw doesn't mind grinding it out because she's going to pop dragons. With dragons, you don't mind going out. And he's coming in with that as fly, and he's taking. All right, so he takes one. He's taking one uh, arcane. We're, we're we're slowly bringing down Pat Shaw here, but Pat's armor is, is gone, so he doesn't have a lot. Oh, does he not have a popper? Oh, I mean, you you want to hang on in case he swings with a mirror guy, right? Like at that point, you want to be like, "Hey, mirror guy." And Alex rightfully so does it. That's right, because Mirror Guy's first first attack doesn't have Phantasm. So Asfly didn't have Phantasm. He hung on. He didn't attack with, with Mirror Guy. So now every time Asfly attacks, he's not he's not gonna have Phantasm. He can't pop it. So this is really, really good on Alex's part. You know, this is the card you want to see in this matchup. This is nine damage though. And he's taking the he's gonna block it all. Alex is going to block with three cards. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and the pummel on top. Oh my gosh. Is that, what is it? Is it Solace? It is Solace. This is a little of Solace. <laughs> oh my goodness. So he'll end up taking one damage from that. Uh, but, you know, his whole hand went out, but that was, that was. Alex just play, just trying to play it one up on, on Pat there, right? That sigil, so good. And now he's going to take one arcane from the Asphalai, Um And he's going to block with Test of Strength. Now he's not popping it simply because... Uh, he's not popping it because he doesn't have... Oh, oh, okay. So this is a weird thing. So Pat Shaw doing that, he showed his top card um, because Test of Strength is... is um, he's still going to do it. Test of Strength says... When this defends clash with attacking hero, the winner creates a gold token. Now, um, the hero's not attacking. The ally is attacking. Right? So, it doesn't actually clash because it's not a hero. I, it's kind of a weird, weird interaction. I think the traps uh, from outsiders are, are very, very similar to that, and that's why that ruling holds. Um, it's kind of a weird interaction that maybe will get cleaned up eventually, or maybe they, they're okay with it not doing that. Uh, swinging, getting the mirror guy out, realizing that, hey, Alex is not going to swing with that, so we need to just get that out, because Asvalai's pinging you for three, right? Like, you do not have any arcane barriers, so you're not going to be able to block it, so you keep the mirror guy out, Asvalai will just swing, you block it, and you'll be continually bleeding one damage every turn. As is right now, I think, you know, Asvalai's done five damage we have a blue sweeping blow so when you attack with sweeping blow you do create an ash uh you also pitched a red for it so that's two ash up from it it's just one so he's gonna block with that civic step we do have that face down flesh and blood card showing that that is our uh quicken token oh and he's sitting on it again where he comes in with the dust up but this time this dust up is four. And he's able to make an ash wing out of it, right? When it oh when it hits, sorry, it needs to hit. So it's not just right from there. So you have a big decision here. Do you just yeah, full commit? So there it is. It's gonna create a mic token. Might okay, so that's four coming in, fully blocking it. You don't want him making that ash wing. And then he's coming in with an ash wing. The previous turn, obviously taking that one and trying to decide. Do you come in? Nope, gonna gonna hold there. I think you're happy with that. Uh, making use of that quicken token, right? Like Pat, both times was like, "Hey, you can't make use of this. I'm just gonna bring this in." And both times using dust up. Now the first time, first time that he did use the dust up, Alex, you know, didn't utilize the go again in there because he's trying to hold the dragon. Uh, but this time making great use of it. But we do have a debilitate coming in. When it deals four more to a hero, the first attack during their next turn has negative two. 
So that is their first attack. I don't know if that applies to allies or not. That would actually be something interesting to look up. Allies always bring in some weird rules, uh, which is kind of to be expected, I guess, in a game that doesn't normally have board state. Uh, but yeah, this is still a lot, right? Like at this point, you probably don't want that crush to come in. So you're probably blocking six, is what I'm thinking. Like, you, I don't think you take, right? You're at nine. You don't. You have two, <laughs> yeah. You 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 absolutely block uh, enough to make sure you don't die, right? There's two floating. There's something in the arsenal. I wonder what it could be. This is your typical two floating extra card, right? I think you full block. I think you nine block this, right? Like I think you drop three cards and nine block this. Alex, really, really thinking this through. Pat kind of looking through his graveyard. This is one of those decks, Victor, so like in these young formats, like I'm not usually looking through my graveyard because I'm not usually it's kind of like, okay, I have this hand, what can I do with this hand, right? You're looking at probably four to five rounds-ish, four to five turns that you might have uh, but with with Victor Goldman, right, and and Roma on top of that, right, like these are big, long grindy heroes, you gotta know what's left in your deck. These decks aren't, they're not getting thin, but they're not like overly thin. All right, there's the pummel, the yellow pummel. So that's coming in for three. So obviously that's more than enough. There's the sigil to put him up. All right, so that's negating the pummel essentially. Um, but you are going to have to discard a card. So he's going out of four. You are going to have to discard a card though in this. I think Alex is trying to decide what he's what he wants to discard. Yep, discarding a ravenous rabble. Oh, interesting. I'm curious what the other card is because that rabble is really good for setting up your guys. <laughs> well, or if it's a mirror guy, doesn't matter, right? Like at that point, great. Um, he did pitch it away. All right, and he's coming in with Asvali again. Remember, um. So he's going to take that one from the arcane. But is he going to block it? You're getting awfully low. Now you are in a good spot, right? It's nine to four. You're putting down. You're putting her down pretty low. I look at this and go like, okay, what are you? What do you do here? Mirror guy does make him lose phantasm, but do you just let it keep coming at you? Oh, yep. Taking that too. Okay. And an ace last swing, which will probably just be one. <laughs> they could just take one at this point. That swing's always annoying me. I'm always like, I, I want to pop it, but like, I, you know, you don't. You, you got to be able to do that. And then the mirror guy's just going to sit there. The way that Alex is, plays the mirror guy, I mean, he plays it basically like it's an aura, right? Like at this point, you have to attack into it. He's not going to attack with it. In Guardian, that's almost like Spectra, right? Because you get one attack, typically. Alright, Pat Shaw, really, really looking at this. He didn't do any blocks. So, the clapback needs to be big. <laughs> okay. Alright, does that, does that mean that there's a pummel, right? We saw a yellow pummel. We've seen a, a red pummel, I think. So I think you just kind of assume that there's a pummel on the back side of this. I'm curious why you get rid of... Yeah, I don't know. So one thing um, in, in Clash, though, that is um, going to be kind of fixed with, with Mysteria coming in, with MST coming in. Oh, there's the pummel. It's a blue pummel. So that's coming in. So he blocked two, so that's going to be two coming over. Now, it isn't going to discard, so that's a big deal. But that does bring him down to one. Oh, he was only blocking for, for five. Okay. All right. Because that puts an Alex in a really bad spot right here. Um, but no, what I was saying with, with Victor, you really only have, like I think, tests of strength. 
are like really your only gold generators. You don't have a lot of gold generators in, in Clash. Um, obviously, uh, visit the gold main is going to completely change Victor because that gives you two more ways of getting gold. Um, and his shield is also an additional gold in there. So, oh, God. Okay. Guys, are like coming in. He's just taking that. So remember, it's the first uh, illusionist attack loses Phantasm. Not the first dragon, none of that. So like, if he attacked with like a sweeping blow or something like that, that would be the one that hits the the loot that loses the uh, Phantasm. But he goes with the Ravenous Rabble into the Asphalai. And he's going to block the Asphalai, as you should at this point. Then you come in with the Aether Ashwing, so that's going to come in here. But do you block that? You do. I mean, he's got one card in hand. So, like, if you, you could pop it, I think you do. Yep, there's the pop. I was going to say, I think, you, I think you need to pop it. You want to end the turn. You want to just swing back with Hammer. His deck is getting low. Like, there's not a lot of cards left in that deck. That is low. All right. Coming in for six, that is a great way to kind of come in and, and try to stop that. You do have the mirror guy. I, I'm curious, though. You look at this, and I go like, okay, it's coming for six. You're going to force him to get rid of two cards. Yeah, so that's going to block for, I think that's three. And seven, interesting. Okay, fate foreseen, kind of protecting against any pummel. Well, of course, there's no pummel. Um, Of course, there's no pummel. Uh, what do we got? Oh my god, the mirror guy, Chromite. That's just absolutely insane. There you go, those two combos. Bring in Asvali. You're going to ping him for one. You're going to force him to block. And then I feel like at that point, I mean, he's still got a, still got a couple cards. All right, so there's the block. Coming in with the Chromite. Basically saying, hey, I'm getting this action point. I have something. You might pop it. Yep, there there goes the pop. Alex has to fix his dragon. And... Coming in with the mirror guy? Oh, nope, pulling it back. Pulling it back. Coming in with the dust up. That's four, though. When it hits... Create an Ashwing. At this point, every Ashwing hurts. Where you're going to be looking at popping an Ashwing. All right, there's there's the block. Take one. Creating the Ashwing. I mean. How do you win from this? I mean, you gotta swing at the mirror guy at this point, but that, or you know, you gotta swing at the Asvali. Yeah, because he's gotta deal one arcane. I mean, I feel like you probably should have done that a few turns. Like, the Asvali's been doing work. I mean, the Asvali from Ping alone, I mean, he's dealt like five or six arcane. Oh, and he's got the other Asvali, which is an immediate swing back, swing out, ping you for one. There's the fist bump. And Dromai. Dromai wins it. Ooh. He's had the Asphalai in his hand right when it swung out. Um, Pat Shaw did not have any. Didn't have any uh, arcane. So that was, you know, Asphalai just did so much work. This is really supposed to be Greg, a.k.a. Darth Prentice, and Will Knuckles, who is the table pit. Uh, they actually submitted this game to me. They had commentated it all i unfortunately cut off the game in like the last few minutes so they couldn't finish the game long ago. i guess it's just over so 100 percent my fault uh you can check out their links below i'm gonna tag them in this for sure they did a phenomenal job and i was very sad we couldn't utilize their commentary i almost just left it in and jumped in myself but i, I didn't want to uh, but my name is nathaniel i am here on the clash channel on the clash hub is uh, i've been organizing all of this uh, i've had absolutely phenomenal people helping me along the way both of which were dark prentice and will knuckles so 
shout out to you guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate everything that you do. They will join you for games two and three. Peace out, everybody.